Dum da dum dum da dum bum bum Hello and welcome to Frame by Frame, the musical edition. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, we're not going to talk about musicals at all today. I hate musicals. Best is over, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? No funny how. I mean, funny like no clown. You? I'm Peter Vinkman. We all go a little mad sometimes. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! In a place that won't let us feel In a life where nothing seems real What, what, what do you find wrong you. with musicals? Just, just not my thing at all. You know, they always seem to um, smile while they're singing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, especially when the scene is dramatic and... I'm going to kill your mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With this spoon. <laughs> I thought you said with my sperm. <laughs> it's the Hamlet edition. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. Well, she could, though. You could choke them with sperm, couldn't you? <laughs> Drown from, them. From a cow. <laughs> okay, so what are we going to talk about in the 29th episode? Um. I don't know. I don't know. Should we um, talk about, like, action films and stuff? It's showtime. Yeah. Um, so what makes an action film? What makes an action? Well, I've, I've been thinking about this ever since last week because we, we said about Leon and Payback we were going to watch the... the um, director's Cut, yeah. Did you watch the director's Cut? I'm not a chance, no. <laughs> who gave him... Who I work 12 time. hours a day now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we were kind of, like, talking those films up for being quite, you know stylish and, mm. uh, and and enjoyable and still holding up today especially Leon not so much Payback Payback's mm, okay but Leon is an incredible so uh, to me an action film it's not about the genre action is something that you put into the mixture any any because any genre of film can be an action uh, can be action I think any genre film can have action in it. It doesn't particularly yes. make it an action film. So we need to define what is actually an action orientated film from a genre, which is actually pure action film. Yeah. Because I could, you could say... Um, well, action is basically ahead of genre. Yeah. Like Pretty Woman, he punches a guy in the face, which is a bit of action. Bit of action in a, in a romantic comedy. Yeah, but it's not commando. <laughs> it's not commando. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he was wearing what, what underwear or not, but no, it, it helps the gerbil stay up. To keep... I knew the gerbil was going to come in. <laughs> you, you mentioned Richard Gere. You go anywhere near his underwear area, and gerbils. <laughs> you think gear? You think gerbil? I'm <laughs> sorry. Gear. You know. Oh man, poor guy. He's never going to get away from that. Poor gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an actual film I'd want to see. Gerbil fighting its way out of gear. And him like <laughs> It won't be the great escape, it'll be the gear escape. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Some <imagine>. gear. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, an action film um stripping away from any other genre. I mean the, you, you mentioned commando. Let off some steam Bennett. I mean, the Commando is 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 a, a film that is meant for just action. Yeah, I suppose when I think action film, I kind of think the eighties. Yes, most I, of it. Most yeah, of it. you know, like like we mentioned Commando and well, martial arts films as well, martial Cobra arts, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, see, martial arts it, it, they're action films, but they're kind of stylized. Yeah. So I suppose martial 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 arts cinema, although it's <laughs> under the umbrella of action films is kind of separate. Yeah, because it, it sets its own rules. It, yeah. it, it sets its own place in, in, in the universe and it's it's generally 
And we should definitely do one on action film, on um, martial arts cinema. Yeah, I mean, but, that, but there's there's a lot of crossover. I mean, science fiction generally is regarded as action. Yeah. And people are disappointed when they watch a science fiction film and it doesn't have action in it. That's usually the distinction between a good science fiction film and a bad science fiction film to the masses who watch them. Not not the yeah. people like you and me who thinks that Solaris is actually a really good film. Yeah. Good um, psychological yeah, and like Moon is... Moon. And Love. Have you seen Love? You've told me about this. I've not had a chance to watch it. it yet. Watch it. It's it's well worth it. It's quite interesting. And, uh, you know, and Interstellar, Interstellar as well, you know, is, is another film where, where you'd think, oh, space. But people automatically think space. <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah. Space opera. Star Wars. So... Space, Space, Matt Damon crying. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so science fiction again has its own place of yeah. action. It doesn't because, but I, I think it's a perception of audiences and, and the common people, the common people, those yeah. common folks who write write reviews. All them. Yeah, on on Amazon and IMDb that that have comments like. You know, there wasn't any action in it. Nothing blew up. Um, yeah. It was boring. It was slow. It was, you know, nothing happened. Because I suppose horror films are action films. You could say, but they are action films. Because we've said this before that if Halloween came out now, it probably wouldn't do as well because not a great deal happens. It's all about building that suspense. But then you look at the original Star Trek the motion picture. Yeah. That would that would not hold up at all now but then you look at the new star trek action film they, mm. it's the action that defines the uh the perc- the actual hunger for the audience it seems as though that uh, people in yeah. hollywood think that action is the only formula i suppose like you, yeah i suppose you're talking with star trek when it, when the next generation was on tv yeah there wasn't I suppose, there was action there wasn't a great deal of it but you know picard was always trying to find the alternative to action. Yeah. Trying to diplomatically find his way out of a hole. So that's but suddenly when yeah. he goes to films, it's the opposite of that. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah, he's like, oh, screw it. Let's kill everything. Yeah. Arrgh, I'm kill angry. I'm angry. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I didn't, I didn't, that's quite an interesting distinction there. Because television, I think basically action in television back then, um, well, it was, it was Texas, it was Chuck Norris. He was the action guy on television. Yeah, I mean, X Files wasn't action, but it was. It had action filled into it. It was. A, it mm. was a. It was an ingredient. Yeah, like in Star Trek: Next Generation, it was something that they needed to have per episode. I mean, there's, there's there are episodes like um, to, to be the, the Star Trek geek that I am, the cost of living, which was an episode about um, about Deanna Troy, and uh, having a visit from her mother, and her mother interfering with Worf's parenting. And taking her son to the, his son to the holodeck and teaching him to be a bit belligerent. Right. That episode has has no need for action at all in it, but the B story um, is the, the one little bit of action that they do have in that episode. I, I, I can't remember what the what the actual action is, but they had to have something an emergency on the bridge that they had to then sort out on the screen. It had to be action, and then they just go back to the to the family oriented storyline. Yeah. Um, but so every episode, no matter what happens in the episode, they have to have that little bit of ing- of, of action ingredient mm. just to kind of keep people awake who kind of need that. It's it's almost like a drug. People need to have the drug. And in some respects, the filmmakers so terrified of not the, of that. well of the, losing the audience. Yeah. That I was like, right, okay, we've had a bit of introspection here. Now we need to go blow up a building yeah because that's why I love the you know like we, we watched Avengers recently and I think that's action done well because it has a purpose yes and trying the, to calm Hulk down you're expecting to have uh, colossal damage in yeah and not like yeah. where you've got like um, uh, the Superman film The Man of Steel where they level an entire city and thousands of people died you know, it's like an afterthought. It doesn't matter. We could yeah. have had all this action, but like in Avengers, where Tony Stark is carrying the Hulk, 
and he's trying to buy he's make he's found a building that no one's in and he's quickly trying to buy the building so he can drop Hulk in it. It's he's trying to buy the building exactly. Yeah, it's, you know what I mean? It's like really well crafted, humorous. Like yeah. when he's when he's repeatedly punching him in the face, like go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. You know? Yes, that is action for the sake not for the sake of action, but action uh, driven by intent yeah. rather than just yeah, I mean being the drug that everybody needs. I mean sometimes that's the medicinal drug. Yeah. Rather than the actual uh, um, recreational drug, I'm, I'm I'm now using action as a metaphor for drug taking. That's I'm I'm okay with that. It's okay. So when you've got mail, when you've got um, <laughs> nothing happening, the but Tom romantic... Hanks Meg Ryan film, not the the gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I got mailed. <laughs> I got mail all over me. <laughs> Covered in letters. <laughs> <laughs> Covered in royal mail. Ooh. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to throw in a caricature then. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, there's, there's, there's actually, uh, there are actually stuntmen in You've Got Mail. I watched like, this. Tom Haggis has an irrational fear of emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know there's... what I've learned recently? Sorry, we're going off subject, but it doesn't matter. Is, um, you know, Dr. Doolittle? Yeah. Eddie Murphy was terrified of every single animal. Really? So he had a stunt double that any time he was dealing with an animal, it's not him, it's a stunt double. And it took... He's terrified of animals? Yeah, he's either such a prima donna or what, I don't know, but... Yeah. yeah know. He, Unless this is kind of like the rumour mill and it was just simply one. No, he apparently was like the the hamster, he wouldn't go near the hamsters. Well, yeah, tennis. Things like, like, I wouldn't go near hamsters. Really? I, I You ain't paying me enough to go near no hamster. It's like he's in the room. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I'm, I'm really not making friends here, am I? <laughs> I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Oh, why should I? Because I'm going to say, please. Drop dead! But, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's... The, so, yeah, he had a stuntman. Yeah, to, yeah, so apparently the editing process was just unbelievably difficult. You know, because, you know, to try and edit it together and use the CGI where it wasn't him. And, yeah, apparently it was just a nightmare. God knows why they did Dog to do a little too, if he was such a... I want to come back to, to not touch more animals. <laughs> well, I made so many millions out of that. Wow, bring that stunt guy again. He looks just like me. <laughs> He's almost in the room again. <laughs> but, yeah, you've got mail. They are our stuntmen. And I, and I, I remember watching it. With my mother, right? <laughs> our number one fan back in 1996, rented it for her and I watched it with her because, you know, I can't stand Meg Ryan, but I'll watch it for Tom Hanks, if you know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> because he's Tom Hanks. I mean, yeah, I love him. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, we looked at the end credits because that's what we do. We're, we're just fans of looking at names. And it said Stuntman, three Stuntmen. Okay. And I thought... How is that possible? How are there stuntmen and you've got mail? So I watched it again and I found them. There's a taxi uh, outside of a window that does an emergency stop and, and uh, as one of the guys walks past in the scene and goes into the shop. Okay. That's it. That's the only stunt in the movie but they had three stuntmen in it and uh, I was like, well, you know, did they need that? Sometimes I think that the that, that action is there for, for the sake of, of, of action. Yeah. Um, when there was actually no even need for it. I mean, they didn't need to have that little bit in the background. Hmm. They just needed to have the guy come in and start spewing all of his, oh, oh, you've got mail. mail. <laughs> I had mail. <laughs> and you've got mail and your shop is closing and I feel very sad for you. That was the drama. Yeah. But look- they didn't need to have the taxi driver. Thing. Uh, yeah. I looked into the mail and the mail looked into me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so sometimes some films, I think, will... There's well, no yeah, point I think, in having action. Yeah, and then... Um, it's that little filler, like in Star Trek Next Generation, where the story was, was holding up. Yeah, and where the, you skirt... The drama. Like, like a Michael Bay film. Yeah. It has to be constant action, otherwise you'll start to think, hang on, that's not right. Yeah, you know every, I mean? scene, every scene... Did, like, that, did that Autobot seriously just urinate on a man? Or did I just see that with my own two eyes? But if it's constant... All right, that happened, and now this all this other stuff happens. You forget about it. You carry on. And you... So watch that. Let's film essay um, by the guy who was was exploring the idea of the, the, the principles of Bay 
pen. Yeah, bay pen. And uh, literally everything, everything was a setup uh, of trying to become, uh, trying to make the frame full. Full, as full as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? We don't need to have a list of action films. Let's close the vacuum cleaner. Um, because we know we know action. <laughs> yeah. We've mentioned you've got mail. We've mentioned. I, oh, I live action. <laughs> you live action. Who she? <laughs> live action. Um, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, so, where, where was I? Well, what to you then makes an action film? Silence. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. it doesn't have to be heavy on plot. No, it's going to be you light want, on plot. Yeah, you need um, an easy setup. So Arnie's kid gets stolen for, from him. Usually it's a personal setup, And he goes setup, to get his kid. It? Yeah. And kills an island of people. <laughs> yeah. An entire continent. You know what completely I mean? Completely massacred. It's when you put yeah. more substance into it that it starts to not be an action film. I wouldn't say then Leon. Then it becomes a drama. I wouldn't say Leon is an action film. I Ooh, think it's a... Yeah. I'd, say, I'd say it's a... Perhaps a drama with action. With action in it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not all wall-to-wall -wall action. Most of it's just, you know... Him and Natalie Portman, who at that age of eleven is acting her frickin' socks off in that movie. Yeah, she's got to feel sorry for for her because she picked up the phone one day and George Lucas said, "Do you want to be in Star Wars?" And she's like, "Of course I do," and it kind of ruined her for a bit. Did she? Did she really say, "Of course, Star Wars"? Because I cannot, um, I just couldn't. It's like Ashley Judd doing Star Trek. I just thought, what? And she completely disowns it. She doesn't want to talk about it. She like, "Yeah, I did that thing. Yeah, okay, get yeah. over it." I think she um, feels like that now, but I don't know. Yeah, I think cause Samuel Jackson, he just when he did Die Hard, he just wanted to be in a Die Hard film. I think when George Lucas brings Samuel Jackson up, I just wanted to be in a Star Wars film. Just Samuel be, Jackson wanted, yeah, he wanted to be in a Die Hard film. That yeah, was he's it. in Die Hard yeah, Three. Yeah. Die Hard with the. I vengeance. forgot that he was in that movie for a second. Natalie Portman being in Star Wars was purely just um, it's school fees. It, it got her through Harvard. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. So. So this is the thing, right? Star Wars are sci-fi films with action in them. Oh. I'd say, like, Avengers and those kind of films, are the, I'd say they're sci-fi slash comic book films with, with action, action in, in, in them. them. Yes. I would say Transformers is an action film. Pure and simple action film, because there's nothing to think about. There's, um, what? what's the goal in these? Is there a goal in these Transformers movies? Bumblebee. Stop lubricating the man. Get that thing to stop, huh? I'm actually not sure. I don't want to spend too much time slagging him off because uh, we, we do that. Yeah, but basically, I think the goal is to defeat somebody, to to get to the end to the end guy. Maybe an action film is just the same as as Kung Fu Master on on a game console. You go through your levels. You 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 beat up a load of uh, amateurs Cause I don't before think, you get to the big boss. Because I don't think anyone learns anything from action if you learn something then all of a sudden it doesn't become an action film perhaps like Die Hard no one learns anything in that they take over um he, <laughs> he learns they learn to fall in love again they they kind of like they were they were divorced well they're separated separated yeah and then they kind of she kind of realised oh I love you because you killed all these people and saved me yeah but that's the thing. He that that's the simple setup. Yeah. Is like this has happened. Yeah, he wants to save his wife. That's it. That's it. That, there's nothing that's, to that's, think about. Yeah, but that's but simple. But, but I is, think that's yeah. done really well. I love I love Die Hard. I know you were saying earlier that you think it's a little bit overrated. I'm starting to kind of feel that maybe there's, I don't know. Maybe maybe that was a bit off off handed comment really because I'm I'm. I'm just looking at the the big canvas of action films, mm. and as you say, now that we're starting to kind of populate them into their different genres, there is specifically action. Yeah. So I'd therefore, say... it is a great action film. It's a terrible drama. Oh yeah. It's a terrible thriller, um, it, but it's a it's a really really amazing action film. And the thing I love about Die Hard, especially yeah. the first one, is you you feel every knock he gets. Yes. Like when he's walking on the glass, you feel that it's glass. Yeah, glass you know what I mean. Very, it's yeah. uh, it, and the the title Die Hard is quite is a brilliant title for that film because yeah. he goes through the ringer 
And he does, yeah. He yeah. manages the end, like the very end when he's walking up to her and he looks half dead and, you know. He's just haggard and. Molly! Yeah. Holly! Molly! Molly is his daughter. Holly! I'm surprised at the end of. <laughs> at the end of um, Die Hard 4 that you didn't have a scene where he was going, Molly! Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 it's definitely not overrated. Die Hard. Mm. Um, I think it's the classic. the um, the franchise might just be a little bit overrated. It's now. too much now. It's it's was the latest yeah, one. Yeah, we'll make another Die Hard movie. Yeah, and Bruce Willis uh, Die Hard. That's what people want. The one show usually has these guests, like someone off Waterloo Road or a bloke who knows shitloads about the history of tarmac. But the other day. There was this bald bloke on, and I was across the room, and I thought, oh, it's Jesper Carrot. Maybe they're doing golden balls again. But it wasn't Jesper Carrot. It was Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis, right, had done this film called A Good Day to Die Hard, and it had this brilliant trailer full of like, amazing things happening, like explosions and more explosions, which is brilliantly done. All the fire looks hot and everything. Hardly anyone seemed to have seen this Die Hard 5 thing till just before it came out. It was like the film people were keeping it secret so no one could spoil it for you by saying, hey, it's brilliant, just before you pay to see it. But Matt Baker and Alex Jones had seen it and they obviously loved it because they kept telling Bruce Willis it was great. And it is absolutely incredible. Thank you. You've raised the bar Thank as far you. as action movies are concerned. Bruce Willis seemed sort of humble about how good he knew the film was. Like he could hardly talk about it, it was so humble. And uh, it has that, that diehard off to it. So. Seriously, he was so torn up with pride, he just had to look at the floor and hardly say anything. Like when they asked if his daughters had seen it. Have the girls seen the film? Uh, you didn't... Like you could see in his eyes, he was really proud of this film. The exciting looking film where he machine guns all the terrorists for like the fifth time, which looks brilliant. He's managed to make the same film five times without dying on the inside or looking like he doesn't really have much enthusiasm for the whole fucking thing anymore and just wishes it would stop. That's not what he looks like. Matt Baker, right, introduced a clip from Moonlighting and you could tell Bruce was excited. A lot of people will remember you from uh, Moonlighting back in uh, 85. It, it kind of launched you, didn't it? Let's just remind ourselves for all those that may have forgotten. Here we go. <sighs> Moonlighting looked brilliant, sort of effervescent, like full of life but not as good as the new film that looks amazing with all the stuff that blows up and, and the exciting shooting and everything and all the computerised pictures where everything explodes and, and the big writing and the banging and the booming sounds. <laughs> In terms of noise alone, it's probably the best film ever. Later they mentioned Bruce's singing career when he did Under the Boardwalk and he was chuffed they brought that up. You should Enjoy. sing Under the Boardwalk. Oh, well, yeah. They showed a bit of it, actually, all that entertaining footage of him singing these classic songs in front of some black blocks in the 80s. It was great. <laughs> Not as great as the film he's done, but looks really incredible with all the helicopters and the death in it, obviously, because that's amazing. Then he sort of made a sound with a harmonica and got a nice round of applause. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, oh, he must have overcome something. That's why they're being nice. Good for you, Bruce. Hope the film makes loads of money. I really do, because it looks good, that film, with all the amazing explosions and, and the shooting in it. And, and the helicopter and everything. And, and then him killing people, like really killing lots of people with guns. Like people were mums and dads in histories. And he just mows them all down because they're sort of bad, probably. I don't know, I haven't seen it. But I expect they are, otherwise he's a fucking murderer. Oh. But then you've got uh, Put me on the like films like Cobra. Again, yes. again oh. a simple setup. Yeah. The, she, did she witness something and they want to kill her to silence her so yeah. you just have to protect her yeah Simple. that's 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 a lovely setup in action film I mean uh, that's that holds well as well in um, in Narrow Margin mm. which is not an action I don't see that as an action film I call that a thriller yeah um, so there is another distinction between action and thriller yeah because I say Heat is a thriller 
Heat is a thriller, not an action movie. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, because there's so much more going on, and there is maybe it becomes a thriller when we do learn something. Mm. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. So I suppose a thriller is like an action film with substance. Yes, an action film is basically, go. Oh, it's King Kong looking for Jane. Mm. That's what an action film is. They've got a, they, and, and it's usually about people or King revenge, Kong, or it's right. about revenge. So is King Kong an action film or is it a monster movie? <laughs> um, if we put personification on it, then it's an action film. Yeah. But if we say that the uh, it's a the, it's an ape. And that the protagonists are us, the ones who are being thrown about. Yeah. Well, there is no protagonist. No, well, not really. There's no antagonist. It's just nature. Mm. That's, that's, a, that's a wildlife movie. <laughs> that's just a wildlife film of what could be. Um, yeah, it's know. like Godzilla <laughs> is full of Monster action. Movie, but yeah. much of a good, so th- we've got another, another group to put things in. The Monster, Monster Movie movies. action. Because... Yeah. There is a protagonist in the new um, Godzilla, but they shouldn't be. I think if you look at the the, the, the monster movie genre, the, the you only you only care about the monster. You don't need to have a guy who appears in every single scene. You need a Brian Cranston there who's in the background trying to kind of coordinate things. Chewing the scenery. Shoot, shoot, chewing the scenery, yeah. But yeah. you don't need to have a, a protagonist who saves everyone. That's where yeah, he's on a he's on a train. And then all of a sudden, that kid gets on, and then the door shuts, so his parents can go on the train. You think, oh, he's going to have to look after the kid now. Yeah, and, and that would be fine if they actually followed through on that, rather than just giving the kid away. Yeah, well, yeah. There was nothing. There, there was no reason for that. There was nothing learned, nothing gained. No, absolutely. It was just merely so that they could have that iconic child who is who has got the red cap and the you know it's the iconic Japanese boy. Yeah. Even though he's. He wasn't Japanese? Yeah, I think he was. He was, he yeah. was yeah. They needed to have that connection. Which is why, you know, they were so desperate to get that connection that they 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 lost it because they ended up landed in Chinatown. Do you think Godzilla's a film that Gareth Edwards wanted to make? I don't think it was. I think um studio interference with that. Quite possibly, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because it doesn't I mean I mean it's it's beautifully visual. Oh, there are some yeah. moments uh, that are superb, especially when they're they're going out, falling out the plane, and it's. it's the, that's the beautiful. Th- that's beautiful. beautiful that yeah. that to me is if that was wall to wall, that it would be great. But unfortunately, they have to put in the tropes, and I think it's the tropes and the idioms and and the things that get in the way are those studio. Mm. So we need to have more that, because they have their big boxes. Are uh, 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 you know because they don't. Their their ideas are not um, very streamlined. They have big, uh, they have a, like a block. They've got triangles. They put the triangles in the triangle block. They put the squares, sorry, the cubes, in the cube block. They put the spheres, the balls, in the round one, mm. and they're all color coded so they know what goes in where. Yeah, and that's how they work. They don't have a sense of breaking that up and trying something new. They have to put the blocks in the right shapes in the right places all the time. Yeah, and so they're not really learning uh, or creating anything new. They're not. They're not working with an art form. They're working with a money maker. Yeah. So this has to happen. We yeah. need this part for this to happen. We need that. We need this. We made money because of this. Yeah. So therefore, we need that and that. This cube fits in that hole. So I want you to basically make the same cube sorter. Yeah. Over there, it's the same thing. But he, they, but Gareth Edwards obviously wanted to make something spectacular, uh, without having the pressure of of mm. of. Because they've released another monsters film. Monster! Oh, the what? Yeah, the... I think it's called Dark Territory. I think, which I've not seen yet, but allegedly it's gone. Where, um, uh, obviously the first one was more of like a sort of love story that was surrounded by this yeah. apocalyptic monsters thing. It's yeah. just all army monsters shoot them up, blow up thing. But apparently, were starship troopers. It's basically. kind of the aliens to alien. I yeah. think you know yeah. it'll be that yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah. where instead of thinking, well, I can't do that again, so we'll just go ball. Let's not see ball, the ball. yeah. Well, the, the monsters was uh, yeah. Um, that's that's not good. That's not. That's I've not seen it, so I can't really. You know, yeah, maybe but... it'd be just 
wall to wall action in it, and that it maybe that is it. an action film. And so. maybe that's it. Maybe that that's that's probably what Aliens was as well. I mean, a lot of people who don't like Aliens, who prefer Alien, are simply just not into action films. That's true. Yeah, but I prefer Alien to Aliens, but I do like action films. Yeah, but you don't like Aliens as. But do you like Aliens? I like Aliens, but I prefer Alien. Yeah. But, but prefer, Aliens is an action film. But maybe preference is, has no meaning in here. It's like Bamboo and Oak. You know, they're both very different wood yeah. <laughs> forms. But I, pre- I prefer the... Koa. <laughs> you prefer Koa. Yeah, I want my wood to grow in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so sometimes comparisons are, uh, are meaningless. I yeah. mean, that's the one thing that human nature, we, we need to kind of realise that there is no comparison. I mean, luckily, they didn't do that with Die Hard. They didn't suddenly put um, Bruce Willis in in in, in, a, in a militia and, and send him out with an army. It was oh yes, they was, did. They called it um, Tears of the Sun. <sighs> but I'm saying yeah, but, but Die Hard was it was a new form of action film. Yes, it was. You know, it was he weren't the perfect ripped army guy. It's just a, a policeman who is sure. put into a situation and he has to try his best. Yeah, even though there's still no potential for him to die in those movies. You know, mm. ironically, Die Hard is nothing to do with him. It's to do with all the others in the movie. Yeah. Because even Die um, Hard 2, I, I really like. I love Die Hard 2. Yeah. I like Die Hard 2 more than I like Die Hard. Really? Okay. And I what think... It's like Ace Ventura then. Really? Really? I, 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 I just love the idea of planes. and air, I mean, that is a huge responsibility. I mean, that's not just looking after his wife. He is literally trying to keep planes up in the air, yeah. and that is a that's an exciting premise yeah, for then, any movie. And it's it's always good when <laughs> you're great. when you're sort of trying to keep the news away from the news people. You yeah. know what I mean? And trying to keep it. He's all he's focused on is saving these people, but everyone else is more focused about keep it quiet. We don't want anyone to know. The and then you've wrong. got the news. I mean, it's a per- that is a perfect action. I, I'm again maybe is it just an action film or do we learn something from that? Because there is, there's a lot of interference from the media uh, in that, and there's that woman that we would love to hate, but she does so well in that movie. Yeah. Um, there's the coincidence of having the guy on the plane with 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 Holly, who's the sniveling asshole that she punches in the first film. Yeah. And that the scenes in in the on the plane were equally as entertaining as as the scenes on the on the ground. Yeah. And then you've got the pure action scenes, the uh, the the travelator. And the, the the DIY guys, the painters. That yeah. that was my favorite action scene in that whole sequence. Oh, I love the uh, fighting on the wing of the plane. Fighting on the wing of the plane. If it has Die Hard Two has absolutely everything. It's got the l- luggage, luggage sorting yeah. uh, escapade. It, it's got humor. Uh, it's got it's got the, the uh, Dick Franz, whatever his name is, Eddie Franz, who is always getting telecall. You know getting picked on by Bruce Willis and then going, all right, I want him out of my, I want him out of my control room. Yeah, 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 that guy. And then you've got Fred. <laughs> the Fred. janitor, Bella. <laughs> no, the janitor, Kelly, he's great. He's brilliant. Like, he's another character. I mean, that is purely full of characters. I was thinking of um, uh, the guy who, who wanted to be president uh, a couple of years ago, Fred. Fred something. Savage. Fred Savage. West. <laughs> Fred West. <laughs> Um. Oh, okay. Die hard. Um. He's the guy who basically uh, lets McLean do his job and tells the policeman to kind of back down, let him do his job. He's the bigger guy. He has all these great lines like "stack and pack and rack him." Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. He's. A, he's. A, I love that guy. And when I, when I look at Die Hard and then I look at Die Hard Two, Die Hard Two is just full to the brim of different characters. Mm. It doesn't stop. It doesn't let up. And then they have that whole snow scene near the, not near the end, but kind of setting up of Act 3. They go out into the snow and they've got those commandos. Mm. They're all getting souped up, ready to go. And what happens? They all get freaking executed yeah. within a few moments. It's like, there's no way. And there's that, that huge... There's that great scene, isn't there, where yeah. they're all talk about their old war days. Yeah. And that kid's like, oh, goes, I still wish... I bet you know I was with you for those times, mate. And then the the actual commando, the leader of them, is like, "Yeah, so do I, kid." And then just shoots him. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. I mean, come on. Well, they set up a, a possibility of there being this huge commando fight against against the, the people on the plane, get the 
get that yeah. um, uh, Escaban, whatever his name is, Escobar, yeah. um, and, and, and sort it, sort it all out. They they were like going in full guns blazing, and they, and they just execute a lot of them. And I just thought this is just. I think it's by far my. I mean, it has the most unrealistic moment um, of possible death. And I think that if you go to, uh, um, or if, if you go onto the, uh, uh, I think it's the people who do the um, um, screen junkies. Right. They do a, a painathon thing, whereas that uh, they show how many times that John McClane should have died in Die Hard and Die Hard Two. Well, the most incredible scene when he gets ejected by the plane and then he comes down oh yeah there's no there's no parachute right there is there's a parachute there's a parachute sure of it yeah I just find that whole scene just incredibly ridiculous that's the only thing about Die Hard 2 yeah it blows up it blows up and he shoots up and he should should have been incinerated there there are many times in in, in any of these movies to be fair you can't watch an action film and and then think oh you'll never enjoy an action film if you're going to go in with that kind of mindset but that's it. That makes it an action film. Well, you can just... In a thriller, you can't... You know, they have to obey the rules of, of medical yeah. uh, uh, trauma. Because in, in, I'm sure in action Die Hard don't. 3, he he sort of he jumps onto a crane and then she goes like about 100 foot onto he a does, boat. They do. And he has that iron file and he has to just pull out of his hand and he survives it. There's no way he'd survive that. Yeah. But, I mean, if you... A good action film, you don't question it. A good action film, yeah. But with action films that maybe haven't got your attention, you're not thinking they're not doing it quite as well, you start to think, oh, no way that would have happened. Yeah, I, I, but I think that's probably what it is. I think for the most of it, Die Hard 2 was kind of like on on the cusp of, of verging you know, reality, medical reality. Um, he was in pain, he was getting injured, he was getting burned, he was getting twisted, his legs were... You know, Mad Max mangled. Yeah. Um, but then all of a sudden they had that scene with him being ejected, and it kind of just threw me out a little bit. Right. So in a way, it kind of it kind of took itself out of its movie for a second, and then it came back into it. I think literally, it's... Fl- yeah, li- yeah, lifted out. Because I think with me though, because it, it, it looks unrealistic, the effects weren't very good, and you can tell it was all green screened or whatever. Yeah, because they, did they, in just, the 80s. they just zoomed in on his face, and you can see how they did it. And yeah. that's that's probably why it threw it me out. Maybe, maybe yeah, because it was so. just not realistic. You know, wasn't done very well. Because the beauty of the Die Hard, it's all actually, it's all done with stunt men, practical, and very practical. But that part was not, and it brings, brings you out because it's so obvious. It's yeah. not practical. So it has to maybe be action done well. We need, yeah, I think you know, what makes an action cinema, an action film great, is the practical effects. Like you've just seen a stuntman do that, like the Mad Max yeah. car chases. People did that, and no one died. It's unbelievable. No, they were injured. Oh, they were injured. Yeah, but oh you know my what I mean? god, more people died in Doctor Zhivago, um, and were actually kept on the screen. You actually see a woman get pulled under a train in Doctor Zhivago, wow. and, and they cut it just before they actually see her get killed that's nice and, of them yeah and this is very nice of them <laughs> so I mean that that is pure action <laughs> she didn't get so paid what, so what um, <laughs> but yeah you're, 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 oh god we saved a few hundred quid there <laughs> but yeah you're absolutely right it has to be practical yeah and it has to be um, uh, it doesn't have to be medically realistic otherwise it takes it to a realm of thriller mm and uh, you know when they get shot, they have to go to to a doctor to get patched up. Yeah, um, I suppose the beauty of Jackie Chan films is when he's fighting, he, he always gets hurt. He always shows the pain of something. Yes, he's not a Superman in these films. He's sort of like he's the lovable rogue who will he will save the day, but he'll get hurt doing it. And John McClane, in some ways, is that guy. He you know he gets hurt. He's not. Yeah, well, John McClane is is just a cop. Yeah, we have to remember that he has is he's not like Jean Claude Van Damme who's gone through um, a full hour at the beginning of a movie um, uh, from from being this this kind of normal guy like John McClane who sees his brother get paralyzed, gets angry, and then realizes I've got to go and get trained, and then he has mangoes dropped on him, and, and he there's, gets pain, and there's pain, and there's, there's stretching. The elements of the action film, the training montage, the training montage, but it's also it's the pain that they go through yeah. in order to get ripped. Rambo didn't go through that. Rambo just came onto the scene ripped. Well, he wasn't as ripped in the first Rambo. Yeah, but they... Yeah. And then Rambo 2, Rambo 3, he was incredibly ripped. 
But that's what makes so Rambo. Yeah. The first Rambo, I don't think is an action film. That's Ooh, a thriller because, because he's not necessarily. He, yeah. he didn't want any of that. The town turned on him because he was a Vietnam vet. It was all about what the war had done to him and how twisted he'd become and he just wanted to be left alone Got but you. they were not leaving him alone and he ends up turning into this one man army because they just pushed him too far interesting and there's that scene isn't there when he, when he finds him in the shop and he's just in tears he's crying his eyes out because of what the war had done to him and he just wanted to be left alone and they just kept pushing him and pushing him until he had no choice but to become this yeah, yeah. But then Rambo two and three, he's just going into Vietnam or wherever to save a lot of people. Yeah, and he's like, he's like up. the quiet, um, heavy who sits there watching everybody else being idiots for a second, and all of a sudden he goes, "Okay, I'm cool yeah. with this grenade." <laughs> <laughs> everybody goes, everybody's yeah. gone, and then everybody looking at him going, "You shot me." Yeah. Oh, you know, something else to get the paper. So what? <laughs> I just. I just went from here to there. To... Yeah, I, you know, okay. I don't agree with what they're doing, but it's a job. <laughs> you shot me for it. <laughs> it says, uh, it I love that in, a, in the Austin Powers where no one thinks about the family of a henchman. Yeah, I so mean, when they, they kill a henchman, the... then it goes to the backstory of the henchman. It's beautiful. Yeah, but, <laughs> see, that's that, and that's it. No, no bad guy can have a history. No bad no. guy can have um, any any sign of humanity in them. Yeah, and that definitely the really most horrible person ever. He's like, you know, when he was a kid, he used to pull the wings off butterflies and laugh. And then when you grow a bit older, he ends up getting into drugs and, you know. And, and then... that's why they messed up with Halloween. Michael Myers, you didn't need to know anything about him. That's what makes him one of the best horror icons ever, is he is just evil. There's no reason. You can't talk to him. You can't reason with him. Yeah. He, Prequels suck. He Darth just, Vader should never have had a prequel. No. That's it, exactly. Where he was just this evil guy, it, it's perfect. But then you start to say, oh, well, he was this, and his parents beat him when he was a what child. Was, I mean, what, what the, the hell you don't need was it. George Lucas trying to do with trying to kind of create the backstory of Darth Vader when we already know who and what he is? What was it? It's like, it's like, well, you know, you you guys kind of judged him a little bit too soon, and uh, I think if you knew about his his life, then you'd change your mind. No, 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 we don't care. No, we don't care, and that's that's why the prequels failed. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, one of the reasons the prequels. The, 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 the actual justification, the idea yeah. behind the prequels was that I, I just want everybody to kind of, kind of know how or Darth, Darth Vader became Darth Vader. You know, it's like he's in the room. <laughs> that's actually really good. It's better than you, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, my Eddie Murphy is terrible. My my, uh, who else have I done? Well, my Christopher Walken is awful. Yeah. But, so, <laughs> Eddie Murphy though, because he he did some good action films. Beverly, Beverly Hills, Cop, Hills Cop. They were action films. So now we're on the Buddy Cop. Buddy Cop. Lethal Weapon films. They're action films, but they're another. They're a sub genre of action films. The Buddy Cop action films. The, yeah. Who was his buddy in Beverly Hills Cop? Was it, but he was being shadowed by the two cops by Judge yeah. Reinhold and the, and the fat guy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, fat guy. Um, but yeah, I suppose, but it's still. Hmm, is it a buddy cop? I suppose it is because he ends up being buddies with the cops. So he's buddy cop. 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 Some small potatoes on the TV. Yeah, well, because I've got a small potatoes. Because I've got Aspen in the um, in the other room. We're kind of just getting away with murder right now. This is incredible. Yeah, I'm actually thinking I, we were never going to be able to do this podcast today. He's he's ex. Yeah, <laughs> he's all right, Dad. I have a kip. When it, you're done, I'll wake up and talk to you some more. I mean, stop this episode now and listen to the beginning and listen to us going. Oh, what are we going to talk about? I have no idea. Now listen to us. Yeah, we're into it. It's like it, it's like all that doubt. Phew, that's fantastic. Is anyway, it, so action film, lethal weapon, lethal weapon. There is a bit more there because Mel, especially in the first film, Mel is a messed up guy, he isn't he? Lost somebody. Yeah, he lost yeah. his, his but wife. He's, but he he's not he's not going after the bad guys um, because of it. That's mm. just simply a part of his makeup. Yeah, that's a part of him. Uh, the reason for the action is not the reason why he's that way. So they're two separate things. Yeah, I think as as soon as you, put, I mean, if if his wife was killed and the people who were in uh, causing the trouble were the people that 
were the bad guys in that movie, mm. then it would just be a pure action film because that would just be revenge for his wife's death. But two things were separate. His wife died. How did she die? Suicide? No, she was killed, wasn't she? Was she killed? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she was killed. Because doesn't it turn out that in either two or three that the main bad guy in that film has something to do with the death? Of, I'm not sure. I'm sh- I think so. But then it kind of ruins it because by that time he's al- already into Rene Russo and he's like, oh, well, the wife doesn't matter anymore. You know? It's, it, it, well, it, there has that scene though where he goes yeah. to the gravestone, doesn't he? Of, yeah. his, of his wife and he's like saying, look, I'm, I'm going to be getting married. That's, that's number four. four. Yeah. 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 Which combines Kung Fu cinema, martial arts cinema, and we're bringing Jet Li into it. With a lot much that was more successful than John Wick. Yes, I think uh, Lethal because Weapon Jet Four Lee is a lot better than Keanu Reeves at fighting. Well, because maybe because he is he plays a bad guy really well. Jet Li, Jet Li is incredible. Jet, yeah. I mean, I I, I think it, he they got him at the right time in his prime. Yeah. I don't think he's doing anything like that anymore. Interestingly, with Lethal Weapon Four, we um, when I was at college, we used to go to this place in Chinatown and we get all the sort of bootleg DVDs. Yeah, that had come straight from Hong Kong. And um, we got Leaf Away for Fox, I'm just obsessed with martial arts cinema, and we watched it, it was amazing. Then it got released on DVD, so I bought the DVD so I didn't have this like, it was like VCD, wasn't it? Like video com- yeah, compact disc. Yeah, so they weren't the great quality, yeah. so we got the DVD, and it was so cut. All the like the real cool moves, and where he like breaks someone's neck, he uses his, like, his chain on his neck to, break, to choke someone, cut out completely. In Japanese cinema? No, no, the Japanese one was uncut. Oh, it was uncut, the one that yeah. we got released here with all the like cool moves and stuff was all cut. Wow. Yeah. There was this part where he does this weird handstand leg splitty thing and he knocks these guys out and just weren't even in it. Because censorship is one thing that I always kind of think about, when, especially when nowadays we're able to get films from America, region, you know, the region one, yeah. we're able to, to kind of see what they see. Um, and as you say, you know, with the Japanese cinema, you get to see a lot more. Mm. And um, I think the American one as well, because Matt had the um, bootleg video that had come from America, where we got from the same place, and that was uncut. But the yeah. one that came into the UK was cut for God knows what reason. Uh, the BBFC standards, I think they they it's it's odd because um, I, I, I remember back in the nineties when uh, Aliens and Die Hard were on television. Mm. Um, the the violence was pretty much there that I was aware of, but there probably is more to it than mm. I, than you know more cut than I really thought because I thought that they edited the dialogue more than they actually uh, edited the um, the the violence because yeah. it was always it was it wasn't epic epic of fucker yeah what was the uh, was it mother flipper or something like that yeah they they completely changed the the, the dialogue and also in uh, in aliens. Vasquez when she when she had a rampage talk about going I'm gonna fucking back down there and we're gonna find the nest I'm gonna fucking blast yeah. them the motherfuckers into you know and she she has a big rage they completely redubbed it with a different voice she goes all right we're gonna go down there and find that nest and kill them all and it was so so diluted and fluffy that it just wasn't it wasn't her and I just wish I had that videotape still because I, want, I wanted to kind yeah. of capture that and put it in a video because I'd love to be able to find all these little bad the thing censorship I can, I can sort, of, clips. sort of understand sometimes censoring language like if it's like really nasty language to sort of to get it as a 15 so we could cut yeah. all those F words out I'm saying F words because Aspen's in the other word in the other room oh yeah, it's yeah. weird isn't it it's, it's, he's sleep for fuck there you go, I've said it. Now I feel like an awful okay. person. That's okay. <laughs> but I didn't quite get it with the Lethal Weapon 4 cutting some of the, the moves because what 95% of the population can't do what Jet Li could do in that film. So I cut it out to say, oh, it's I'm going like to try and do too. a handstand spinny leg split yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, weird. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, there are worse things that you you see on film that never get cut. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, uh, Clockwork Orange wasn't cut and uh, they, they yeah, rammed a huge dildo up um... anyway that was my favourite scene <laughs> but um, like in Drunken Master 2 yeah. um, it was one of my favourite Jackie Chan films he does this move where oh. he he jumps he sort of spins round and he jumps off his right leg his right leg spins around he 
he goes to kick someone with the right leg he just jumped off but misses the face but lands on the same leg and then kicks him with his left leg and it was all cut out of the American one yeah. and I'm like who could do that I'll show it you later you know the actual movie but I mean he jumps he off his it. right leg spins around his right leg that he just jumped off just narrowly misses this guy's head he lands on the same leg he just ki- he just tries to kick him with and then kicks him with his left leg that's like that's like, like that's it's, like um you know you know those little action figures that you had where you push the button and the legs go in different directions. Yeah, well, it's unbelievable. It's, it's probably like possible. He's done it. <laughs> yeah, and but they quit. I'm like, well, why? No, I, I can't do that. And I'm not going to try to do that. So don't cut it. Yeah. So you know. so what we're saying is, is that as far as censorship goes in this country, um, cutting cutting action is is pointless. Yeah, but I don't cutting, think it's cutting simple. bad language is simply just to lower the age. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. But then you've got Jackass, and they can put that on channel whatever. Who uh, who cares? Yeah, bad grandpa who's done by the same team where he, he he sits in this like you know like a toy car that kids sit in and it shoots him straight through a window. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, leave that in because it's for comedic effect. Uh, is that how they get away with it? Is that probably yeah yeah because it's that that's the, the yeah, it's ridiculous and I think that that's you know censorship i have a big problem with no matter what you mm. know is being shown if it's being if it's there in the film then it's there you know if, if that's what is being filmed it's there leave it it's like, that's like going into the tate gallery finding that hairy hairy um statue of a man that was made out of pubic hair and shaving it yeah <laughs> that's really good yeah you don't it's the art is the fact i mean it's like going to um yeah to brett um, i was gonna say brett ratner then well, um, the Rush Hour films, they're action Brett, films. Yeah. They're the new Buddy Cop Rush Hour films. <laughs> Rush Hour, there's, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I um, enjoy those films, I think they're good. Because the surface, and there's nothing other than... I mean, I think Buddy Cop films have a different kind of formula. They don't generally go for the uh, revenge of the family member. Mm. Um, they usually go for wanting to, to rid... rid uh, or, it's not usually an assignment that they go on that that they get caught up in is it well the first one um, the Chancellor's daughter gets kidnapped and Jackie is the the Chancellor's from Hong Kong and Jackie is asked by him to come over from Hong Kong and help find but the police don't want him interfering because they think he's just useless so they give him with Chris Tucker who is useless and say oh you know just get show him the sights keep him but obviously it's Jackie and he's awesome so yeah. he ends up, you know, doing the thing. So it was a chaperone that wasn't necessarily the assignment, and they just basically said, "Well, let's, you know." The FBI do, basically said, "Just keep him out of our way." Keep him out of the way, and they actually do the opposite. Yeah. Ah, I see that. I, I, I cannot remember Rush Hour. Yeah, it's just interesting because you can tell the parts that Jackie directed to the part, the action parts that Jackie directed to the parts that Brett did, because Brett Ratner does not know how to shoot action scenes. I mean, but you've got Jackie Chan at that point has 20 years, 30 years of experience of doing that and being the best. I honestly think that Jackie Chan is a genius when it comes to choreography. I've never seen anyone be able to portray martial arts on You're film right. as well as he can. And the, the secret is, is, as we've learned recently, is the fact that they don't, he doesn't cut from the punch yeah. to the actual... You know, it, it, every, every piece of action is complete... Um, and seen visually mm. as a complete piece it's not cut and when you're talking about practical effects who has ever done it better than Jackie yeah when someone jumps from the top of a building it jumps from one building to the balcony of the next building yeah it's him doing that and you've got three or four multiple camera angles so make sure you know he did that and you know his influences his influences were Hal Lloyd yeah and Chaplin um, Chaplin and um, well yeah, Pro- Project Buster A Eden. when he's hanging from the um, the clock tower have you seen that have you seen Project A uh, is that Jackie Chan yeah uh, Harold Lloyd also hangs from well that's clocks. it it was a homage to him yeah homage yeah yeah it, that's where his influences are and that's where he put his martial arts into and that's mm. the reason why martial arts films his martial arts films especially are so effective because he blended the two together yeah I mean imagine if Charlie Chaplin and um, Buster Keaton or Harold Lloyd started to do martial arts in their films that would be awesome well absolutely <laughs> well, <we're, laughs> but if you watch like the early Bruce Lee films you know he'll be fighting someone but you see all these guys in the background who sort of just but going from side to side, from side to side, waiting and waiting, and then once he's beat that guy up, one of them will join. He'll beat that guy up, another one will join. He'll beat that guy up. What Jackie did is all the guys are on him at the same time, 
Yeah. And he's just got to get through it. That's because it. that wouldn't happen. You wouldn't wear, oh, it's my turn to get beat up now. You wouldn't. You'd be like, right, so I'll get him. Yeah. Kick the crap out of him. But in Jackie's film, he's five, he's five or six people. The choreography is astounding. And, and that's get away the, with that. I think the, the one big problem when you start to go away from just the punching to guns is that the realism suddenly does fall out completely. I mean, when it comes to martial arts films and Jackie Chan's films, especially, um, also Bruce Lee to a certain extent, fighting hand to hand is so much more painful and realistic than any gunfight that you will ever see because people who are trained to kill people don't suddenly fire guns wildly and not hit anything mm. and that is that's why so many action films in, in, in the states that's come from the states especially just don't work mm. And um, and that's why they had to create the buddy cop movie. Yeah. They had to create the Die Hard uh, movie where he he doesn't necessarily have a gun all the time. He actually has to be inventive and fight. They had to. I mean, I mean, if you look at the Arnold Schwarzenegger films, the Sylvester Stallones, the I Am Indestructible Me, yeah, movies, um, Chuck Norris movies. No, nobody knows how to fire a weapon. <laughs> that's true. So they needed to have, they needed to change directions, and that's why Die Hard is that pivotal change yeah. in the way that the action is dealt with, because they don't necessarily all have guns, and they're not always. They're, they're, having a building, especially, is is difficult because you're going to go from room to room and have different things in the way, so they're able to use that. Mm. But in a lot of those op open jungle scenes, where where you know you've literally just got tree, open space, tree you've literally got two pointers there mm. you've got the guy running away from you and yet you're doing this <laughs> you're spraying gunfire yeah. instead of actually working within that frame of actually saying well, okay well he's directly right in the middle of those trees bang gone done yeah goodbye Arnold Schwarzenegger they don't I mean if you look at it as a, as a, as a shooter as somebody who's actually shot guns um, you work in that frame you mm. work within the frame of where you're firing no, absolutely I think that part of it was born out of watching you know in the 80s they were probably seeing what Hong Kong cinema were doing and saying they were so much better at it than us yeah but we they need can't, to rethink really, yeah. how we approach this and what what have we got that they haven't guns well, it's money and guns <laughs> money, money and guns so there we go let's let's do that and then that's and where the heart ex came out of it and then the explosions became more yeah. wild and uh, and then it became okay well this is where the the cube fits in the cube the circle fits yeah. in the circle we um, have a formula we have a formula and let's stick to it and uh let's you know let's also do the the punching scenes let's have the fight scenes where they have no weapons because mm. usually the last scene in an action film they're not just going to shoot each other they 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 throw their guns down and all of a sudden they start they to run out of bullets that's they run classic out of bullets. they run out of bullets yeah. click 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 oh no we're gonna fight now or as john woo would have it let's just have four you know four guns uh, aimed at each other and let's have a Russian standoff yeah um, but I remember watching a Chuck Norris film it was probably missing in action 36 or something <laughs> where um, this guy he's got no gun on him and this guy sort of pulls a gun at, a handgun at him and, and points it and he sort of he very creakily sort of just gets on the floor and it just starts to roll <laughs> And then, you, and then it goes to the point. Then it goes to the guy just shooting, you know, just a, like a shot of the guy just shooting at him. And then back to Chuck is just rolling on the floor really slowly, and you just see these little bullets like missing the back of him. And he just sort of gets up in front of him and punches him. I'm thinking, what the hell is that? It was hilarious because he was getting on at that time, and it was it wasn't as if it was this big sort of like he jumps on the floor and rolls there quickly and jumps up and punches him. It's like Chuck saying, "No, I'm I don't need no stunt man." So he sort of just gets on the floor slowly, <laughs> gets himself comfy, and then slowly starts to roll towards him while the guys are missing him with all these shots. And, and when the guy reloads, Chuck Norris goes, "Can I have a pillow, please?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> It was so funny. Oh, but that, that's when it, they just realised, yeah, that you you got to stop doing those movies. Um, but... Um, so, would you say so, the yeah. Bourne films? Oh, okay. The Bourne they're films. action films. I'd say they are. Yeah. But and then, another subgenre is the spy action films. Which is the James Bond action films, which puts it in a different perspective because then you they're trying to inject something else in there I think with the Bourne films again Hollywood reinvented itself again and reinvented action cinema again for itself because then it was more hand to hand yes. really well choreographed 
quickly caught. Mission Impossible kind of had the edge on that in terms of the espionage. Yeah. And so that they blended the two things that act, where action was going in its own direction, espionage started to come in, mm. and then they just kind of just met. Because I remember just the Bond films coming out, and I thought I'll go. Pff, I like Matt Damon. I'll go watch it. Not thinking it was going to be anywhere near as good as it was. And then to see Matt Damon as an action star, yeah, he reinvented himself. And I think, my God, he's good. I mean, we we, we, really ripped, we ripped on Matt Damon in uh, Interstellar simply because that, that's just there's no reason for him to be in that movie. It, like we said, it should have been yeah. someone else. He's too big of a star to but be. He that. is really good when he gets his teeth into a project. When you know that he's got got a passion project, mm. Courage Under Fire, he it, it, that was a passion project. Yeah. The Bourne films definitely passion projects mm. um, you know. and again I think it's when they are working with a director where he, he works well with that director sorry it should have worded better because we have it with Kurt Russell and John Carpenter you know Robert De Niro Martin Scorsese the people who directed the Bond movies and Matt Damon they work well for, who's, I forget the director's name Bob Bob yeah because Bob he was in Twin Peaks but when Twin Peaks stopped, he went and um, started directs Bond Supremacy. <laughs> but he'll he'll do the Bond. Twin Peaks first. is not an action film. <laughs> That's a horror film. Uh yeah. I mean, action. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, in a way, I think we've we've sorted, we've clarified a lot of things that mm. that what action is, what action isn't, and how action is as a function and action is as a, as a, as a as a full picture. Yeah. Um. Where is action now? What's happening in action films now? Well, gone beyond. Guns. If it was a pure action film, we're talking like John Wick, which is just guns and. That's just an action film. That's just an because action there's film. no substance. There's no. I mean, yeah. Good people like we've said, like Joss Whedon, can use action to push a story forward. Yes. He doesn't use it for the sake of it. Where a friend Michael Bay would use action purely because he's got no story to tell yeah action, so, action is it, basically there to, to make you forget that there could be a story yeah you know um, and if there's not action there's a girl's ass. yeah you yeah, know it's of course. Um, yeah that's it um, so action in itself is, is really not very strong at all now it's it's literally just a, it's either a device to, well may, give me an action star now Exactly. In the eighties, you had Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis. But, but now they've all come back out of retirement. Yes. And they've made Expendables one, two, two three. three. We don't talk about Wesley Snipes. You ever play roulette? On occasion. Let me give you a word of advice. Always bet on black. We haven't. No. I mean, he was a good action star he in was the eighties. Rising Sun was actually a thriller, but uh, that was a good film. Yeah. But Demolition Man, he was a bit of a weirdo, freaky. Yeah, cause yeah, you put obviously them two together, Sly and um, Still, yeah, and Wesley Snipes, and yeah, yeah, that was a good first Stallone because Wesley Snipes was like this meta human in it, wasn't he? He was yeah, like right. being sort of made super, super, super strong, yeah. So he couldn't beat him, and it was a nice little dynamic to have. I don't, I mean, he, he always works better with other people. Hmm. Um, Wesley Snipes on his own. Come on, Blade One and Two are brilliant. Three, not so much. Action films. Yeah, then I suppose. But, that, but um, they were they were they they not. Well, I suppose the sort of hot. The second one, especially, is a horror film with a kind of action. Blade Trinity, Jessica Biel's in that one. I remember. That's dreadful. Um, and uh, was it one of the um, Donny not the Osmonds? <laughs> <laughs> But no, I know you mean. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have to find the sound effects now. He just provided it. <laughs> I just spat everywhere as well. But no, <laughs> yeah. the guy had a bros. Yeah, he, yeah, he's in Blade yeah, Two. But who directed Blade Two? Who directed Joss Whedon? No, Gail, <laughs> Gail Del Toro directed Blade Two. Oh, really? That's the best one. Okay. Because they have all the weird, horrible vampires where the thing comes out of the mouth and yeah. the jaw opens, and it's really okay. that's the best Blade like, film. Kind of like Predator in a way. Very similar. Yeah. yeah, Predator. Right. The, the first one was was not an action film, was it? Was it sci-fi? That's when they tried. That's where you've got the two things again coming together. Action. I'd say it is an action film. Yeah. Where it's just some army blokes in in a jungle, 
being picked off one by one. Predator two, love. I, uh, no, I like Predator I two. Predator I th- does two. that cross more into sci-fi? It's more. It's more um, uh, um, post-apocalyptic um, because yeah. it's World War Three. It's kind got of like a, a Robocop like a vibe to it, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it's very. Uh, I again, Die Hard two, Predator two. They both came out at the same time. They're both stronger to me than the originals because mm. of the content and the amount of stuff in it. I mean, you got you got so much in Predator two going on. You, Did, uh, you have to watch it over and over again to remember and appreciate it. Yeah, and um, the, you feel the heat. It's so hot all the time, isn't it? And yeah. You, you feel it comes across. But I always remember Wild. that woman who's having the. I've never known a girl to orgasm like that. You know, when it's like you hear oh, a, yeah, she, you, a you woman, <laughs> and then it goes, and it's like a cityscape, and then it, you just yeah, see this you, woman you see riding. a woman in the guy. window, she's riding like crazy. And I'm like, that is the most. I was like, calm down. I t- no, I, when I was, well, I think I was 12, 13, 14 when I was watching that, and I kind of thought, oh my God, is that what you can do? <laughs> yeah, I want to do that. I want to go there. Yeah. But then, then all of a sudden they come blasting in and they kill him and she gets thrown to the side. And, yeah, uh, and she like, wants <laughs> Um, and just for a second, you know, you... I, I recorded that on tape. I must have rewound and watched that yeah, little bit it, so many times. Let's let's watch Predator Two, but let's start it about twenty-seven minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was twenty-seven and thirty-two seconds. <laughs> but it was it was yeah. I mean, honestly, I do remember that as well. Yeah, it, it, it was quite an impact on I my think little teenage the, brain. Yeah, exactly, because the age. There's no way. Right. What is she doing? She is riding. She's. <laughs> she's not like that in the films my dad has <laughs> yeah <laughs> but by that time I'd already seen Basic Instinct and uh, that kind of made made sex into something else and then all of a sudden there's like what the heck is that yeah do um, all girls have ice picks when they have sex is <laughs> that yeah. like a defense mechanism if they're not enjoying it they kill you what is, it's what's like, going on yeah I kind of I kind of knew that it wasn't <laughs> I kind of knew it wasn't real but <laughs> That wasn't a normal date. <laughs> that's, like a, that's not a how-to. Like oh, that's love the French. Every way. date I went to after watching that film, I just came with a gift of an ice pick. I hope you enjoyed the evening. <laughs> yeah. you know. it's like it's like formality. It's okay. <laughs> on a on a first date, bring your ice pick. <laughs> yeah. um, but... So action films. <laughs> to summarize, you know, we know what an action film is. Yes, we, we do. can identify a film that is simply just using action convention and um, we know where f- action films are going do we? No. What's uh, the future of action the films? The future of action films I don't know. Pure action films I mean has, has, it, has it gone as the golden age of action films uh, I think action as a genre is, is, is always something that we will go to as, as a I think Hong Kong Kung Fu cinema will never die I think that will always be a thing like yeah. you've got like young back with Tony Yan and stuff like that. And you mentioned um, a, a, a kung fu. Uh, sorry, these um, films um, where you don't know which one's going to die at the end. And I saw that scene when they're in the raid. Too. The raid. Yeah. Oh, uh, when there's the future of action cinema. Right that, there. I mean, that is that is just pure blood fighting. That it's is amazing. Blood, I mean, I, I was watching that scene and I thought, this is horrible. This th- 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 that's the thing. Back in the day. Kung Fu uh, movies were more theatrical. What do you want to do? Now like, it's grungy. It's kind of like brutal. Yeah. Saw it's all martial, no art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. But so, I love because the Raid Two, the Raid films are brutal, but mm. they're great. Like I say, Raid One is pure action film because they have to get a warlord, this drug lord, out of a high-rise building. Yeah. So they go in. They're seriously outmanned. He's got to fight his way to the top and try and. Do do what you can to get back to his wife. Just like Josh pregnant. Dredd. There you go. No, but uh, <laughs> the Dread Two. But um, the Raid Two was more like a gangster film with action cinema, but it's brutal. I mean, there's this fight scene in a prison, which is all in this mud, and he like grabs this guy's jaw and rips his jaw off his face and stuff oh, like that. It's really brutal. That's, yeah. But I think that end fight scene is incredible. That reminds me of American History X: The Curb. Oh, don't. <laughs> There, there are things in cinema that I cannot, I have to look away from again. If I, I can't watch American History X because of that scene, Pan Labyrinth. I mean, but, but yeah, the, the smashing, the caving, the, the the skull. I mean, I will watch that again because I I can just look away. But you know, if 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 the 
they're going to cut anything out of out of British releases? Why don't they cut those? I mean, uh, it's a lot easier to thing. bludgeon somebody's face in this than it is, is to do a, a, a swizzle kick. It comes down to money. If we can get that to a 15, more people will watch it, we'll make more yes, money. Yes, but caving somebody's face in is something that anybody Not many can people, do. Um, right, if you're going to watch a Lethal Weapon film or you're going to watch Panda Labyrinth, more people are going to watch Lethal Weapon than Panda Labyrinth. Therefore, true, they will true. make more money. So they don't need to weapon. cut it. They don't need to cut it. They leave it alone. Yeah, that in the, because that many people are going to watch it. American History X, they leave it alone. because. So the bigger the movie, the more potential, the more fear that BBFC have in, in allowing its release to come into this country with those scenes intact. The, the end of the day, it's all about making money. They yeah. want to make as much profit as possible. And that means bums on seats. So that means... Let's reducing, get... reducing that re- that rating down as and, low as possible. Yeah, it's like I think it was Wolverine had no blood in it to make it a 15. When they released it on DVD, it's 18. And it's got a foot that's full of blood. Yeah. It's about money. It's about money. So you release two versions of it. It's all about money. I have nothing else to add, Your Honour. <laughs> Case closed. Yeah, I think yeah, we're done. I think we're done all right. Yeah, that was good. Thank you very much. See you next week. You know, I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends at Frame by Frame. They do that podcast You thing. know, two guys, yeah, they do the podcast, okay? So how... They're, they're nice, they're, they're like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you want to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking uh, thing... Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame 78. If you'd like to go to the website, that will be www. Roastedportions.com hey, hey, hey. You don't need to do the WW It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web well, People need to know that Okay, just go to Roastedportions.com Okay, you go down on the right hand side You've got the social connections You can you can talk to the people Who do the show You can even talk to uh, uh, The people who made that movie You know, CACO3 Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know, they made a pretty interesting movie, right? Yeah. It was in black and white yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because, and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh, trees! It's like like being in a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well. And if you want to comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay. Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and then and com- comment. I mean, it's just just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail dot com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up. So, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go, go plant a tree. I'm gonna go tweet. You tweet. I'll plant a tree. It's us, we're out of here.